Now I'm sure this looks familiar to most of you. This is a very sort of familiar Windows 7 screen, but behind it and working in it is something called Windows 8, and this is a little tutorial on how to use Windows 8. The first thing you have to know about Windows 8 is that usually if you go to the Start menu up here, there's usually a Start bar. You can press Start. It's very familiar. We've had it since Windows 95, but they've changed it. The, uh, the engineers at Microsoft wanted to come up with something almost entirely new. Um, and so they use this thing called they're using this thing called Metro, and it's an internal code name for a typography-based design language created by Microsoft. Originally, they used it in the in uh, Windows Phone Seven, and early uses of the Metro principles uh, began as early as Microsoft and Carta ninety five and MSN two point zero, and it later evolved in their products such as Windows Media Center and and Zoom. And so the, now they're trying to use this stuff for. Uh, the uh, new Windows 8. What you got to do is you press the way you start out is you is you go to the Windows key and you press Windows and that takes you to this thing called the start bar, start menu, whatever you want to call it. And you can click at any one of these icons and it'll take you to that particular program for instance. If it's a Metro program it'll it'll come up in full screen like this Los Angeles Times is one of those Metro apps. Let's try it out. Click on it it opens up in full screen almost like it's an iPad or an iPhone and you could just read the news in full screen so you see it comes up Los Angeles Times March 4th 2012 they're fetching the news you could see there's some interesting things going on in the world the interesting th the interesting thing about Metro is that it it you you kind of have to move horizontally as opposed to most operating system still sort of use a vertical design. It's very interesting. It's, it's a horizontal design. Uh, so yes, you click on a tab and if you want to go back to the start menu again, you just press the Windows key again. It takes you right back to the start menu. Now, you could spend all your time clicking blah blah blah, click, a, click calendar, click music, click messaging, but I'm more of a, a keyboard shortcut kind of guy, so let's say I want to open Chrome. Now you could click right here on Chrome, or you could just type C-H-R-O-M-E. Now you'll see that even by the time you, you hit the C-H, it already knows what you're, looking, what you're looking for, and all you have to do is press return, and it'll take you directly to Windows Chrome, or I mean Google Chrome, and you can see it opens up here. Let's try to go to DuckDuckGo. Okay, and now we're here, and you could search for whatever you want to search for, whatever it is. So that is sort of the basic design of Windows 8. The only big difference, obviously, is this is this taskbar here. I mean, the, the the new start bar. So let's open a few things. Let's try out um, MSNBC.com. We'll open that up. And there, are, there are some familiar things, and I want to talk about a few uh, ways you can sort of have some shortcuts in Windows 8. Um, if you hit the Alt key and then hit the Tab key at the same time, and then you just hit Tab again and Tab again, and you just if you keep hitting Tab, it'll take you through all of your running processes at the time. So let's say we want to go back to MSNBC, or no, let's say we want to go to the LA Times. It takes us back to the LA Times. Hit Alt Tab. Takes you to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. So you can see it's it's a very just quick way to go through all of your processes happening at that time. Now, and if you want to, let's say you don't want to have uh, Chrome open anymore. If you hit Alt F4, that will automatically close Google Chrome. So let's try it. Alt F4. See, Google Chrome is now closed. And if you go in here. You can go through and let's say you want to close, uh, let's say you want to close the LA Times, Alt F4, close that right out and takes us back to the start screen. So um, the Alt tab and the Alt F4, those are things that have been around for a long time and I just wanted to make people aware of it if they weren't already aware of it. One, inter one interesting thing about Google, uh, um, Windows 8 is that they're trying to use the SkyDrive, and they're, they're trying. And SkyDrive is a cloud-based service, and it's one of those things where Microsoft is really pushing, just like Google, just like Apple with their iCloud, they're really trying to push the cloud-based services. So you see, I've created a document called Test One. If you click on the document here in the SkyDrive, it'll take you um, out to your browser of choice. In my case, it's Google Chrome, which is um, one of the best, most lightweight browsers you can use on any computer. You type in your username and your password, and it takes you directly in. And you can see we have 
the document test one on the SkyDrive, and you could see right here, there it is, test, test, test. And if you click edit in browser, you can actually edit this document right online. And it's pretty cool. It'll always ask, every time I open this, I think it's a bug with this developer preview, uh, would you like to recover them? I always just click no, because there are, I, I did save it, so I don't know why they keep asking me that. And you can see it's open, and you can start editing it directly online. Hello, world. And you just click up here, go up here and click save, and it saves it online. So it's basically like you have, just basically you have a, a place where you can work on Word documents, Excel documents, PowerPoint documents online without ever having to buy, without ever having to buy, actually buy um, micro, the, the software itself. So it's pretty cool. Um, the corners are another aspect of well, first of all, before we go to corners, let me talk a little about SkyDrive. The one downside of SkyDrive is that you cannot edit anything that's not Microsoft. So like if it's not in Word format, if it's not in Excel format, and if it's not in PowerPoint format, you can't edit it. And to me, that's a big limitation, especially since I mostly run, I'm mostly a Mac person. And so for the fact that I can't open my pages documents or that I can't open my plain text files in SkyDrive, that bugs me a lot. So let's go on to the corners. Um, if you go to the bottom left corner and you click in that bottom left corner, it takes you to the start menu. If you go to the top left corner, it, it'll show you all your running processes. See, I only have two things running right now. If you move over to this side over here, it shows you this. You can go back to the start menu. You can share stuff. You can search for stuff. This is just all stuff on this sort of right-hand side if you move your cursor over there. So that's kind of how the corners work. It's very similar to like a Mac OS X type of feeling with the corners. I think they're trying to sort of have that functionality that the Mac brought to the Macs without, um, without totally copying them. And now let's talk about some custom fixes that I have made for my own uh, system here. Up here is the Dropbox. Dropbox is something that I don't think you could live, once you have it, it's really hard to live without it. Let's open the Dropbox folder. Anything that you save here in this Dropbox folder saves directly to any com any computer that you install Dropbox on. If, if it's installed, then you can access your files anywhere in the world. And so I would definitely recommend uh, installing Dropbox on your computer. Now the next thing I recommend for people to get if they want to have sort of a custom Windows 8 feel, if, if you're really into like keyboard shortcuts if, or if you're really into getting things done quickly, um, on, on Macs they have Quicksilver and on PCs for Windows 8 you have something called Colibri, C-O-L-I-B-R-I, -I, Google it. And I've created a custom shortcut to open Calibri by hitting Alt Spacebar. When I hit Alt Spacebar this, this little window pops up. Now. Let me just show you how you would have to do it otherwise, so that you understand how good this is. Let's say you want to edit a, a particular file. Let's say you want to edit a file in uh, My Documents. You have to go search for My Documents, and you see how uh, Windows is not real well, good at knowing when I'm searching for My Documents, they automatically go to Apps first. Like that's sort of their default thing to go to first. And so not I have to I have to hit down down and hit Enter for files my documents nothing comes up uh, see so let's see here so I can't even get to my documents it's, it's already a problem now Calibri on the other hand let's go to desktop uh, let me see I can't okay Calibri on the other hand uh, all you have to do is hit alt space bar you get this pop up here let's say you want to go to my documents you type in my and already it knows we're at my documents and all you have to do is hit the left arrow key to to enter into or uh, drag to drill down into my documents and you can see here are all my documents and I want to get to a particular text file I type T for text file it takes me directly to the text file that puts that one first in the return and I just hit the right arrow again and now I have the test I have this test file text now if you hit you could open it in notepad and, and and work with it there but if you if you if you just want to append a line if you want to add a line to the end of the text file all you do is hit tab and go down to append or just hit a and it append a file you hit enter and you let's say this is a test to you append that to the file hit enter you do you wish to modify it just click yes and you've you've edited your text file without opening any 
program besides Calibri. So let's go back to Calibri, open my documents just to make sure it worked. Type T for the text file and then hit enter to open the text file. You can see right here it added exactly what I wanted it to add. Very, very good. So that is, I would definitely recommend Calibri just because it's a little bit more responsive to what what uh, to a user's needs, especially with the uh, shortcuts. It just cuts down on the amount of mouse work you have to do. And I'm on a pretty small computer here uh, at, at the school I work at, and so I really like having that ability to just drill down on what I need to drill down on. Finally, um, I would also suggest, let me open, something called, res I don't even know how to say it, I don't want to mispronounce it, but Resif or Resoft Notes, and let's open that up just to show you what that's like. Um, this is actually, I prefer writing in this over Microsoft Word any day, not only because it's more lightweight, but also because uh, it's just, it's, it's better to run. So let's say we want to search for BioX1. You see it comes up. Uh, it pops up exactly so I can have I can have hundreds of text files here and I and I all I have to do is search for the one I have to search for there's no opening documents and let's say I want to add something here let's say I want to test 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 add something here and I let's say okay now I want to go to BioX2 all I have to do is go back up here BioX2 go to BioX2 and you'll notice that I didn't I didn't have to save anything if I go back to BioX1 and I go back down to the bottom you could see, whoops, didn't do that right, BioX1, and you go down to the bottom, you can see that the test, test, test was written in. I don't even, uh, Resoft Notes saves things automatically. Every, every keystroke you make, it saves it. And it's just, I find this to be so much easier to use, especially since I do a lot of stuff like with blogs and different things. I find Resoft Notes to be one of the most useful tools on the Mac, it's NVALT, N-V-A-L-T, uh, and on the PC, I, I always use Resoft Notes, and I would highly recommend if you're gonna, if you want to run a really powerful machine, and um, this is what I would highly suggest. So you just hit Control F to search for a new document. Let's say we want to find our uh, something from my history class, history X. All I have to do is click on Andrew Jackson, and now I have all this stuff um, open.